Hello my soccer universe, really not feeling great today, but yeah, the show must go on. Um, Freddie Mercury, speaking of the show must go on, can pull out that scream while more or less lying on his deathbed at the end of the show must go on and I can do a freaking video and I can do a little bit of coding today as well. So yeah, Champions League, we have to talk, uh, boy this was an eventful uh, week i have to say i will run through all the results give you a little bit of my thoughts on each and one of them um the jerseys up there are ranked by who are the biggest winners and just a teeny bit losers in there as well as i do now and they're wearing bayern munich because they find themselves now as the top favorites according to my model and i decided yeah let's wear bayern because it's better to wear them in a short video than having them on the wall for the next 24 hours or whenever I will do the Europa League Conference uh, League uh, review. I would say let's dig in. Uh, I, you know, I watched uh, a goal conference, as they say, or I think it's called in, in England the goal show. You know, they switch back and forth between the games, which at times, especially on Tuesday, where I have to say, except for one result, I could live with almost any result there on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday was over, all, 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 over a good day. There was just one, one result that completely uh, cramped my style. And I was also very annoyed by the way they were switching back and forth because there was clear, uh, I don't know, pandering to a fan base and going to, to the games that are already decided instead of going to the games that are exciting. Um, but yeah, early, early game. Ajax Besiktas, all I can say, Besiktas hit the post early. Ajax then took over. Ajax created chances, missed many chances and scored two goals through Berghuis and uh, Alea. Berghuis also um assisting the second one and then in the second half they fell completely asleep and i'm wondering if what's wrong with ajax that the last two games were only five goals crisis maybe um i was also relatively content with what Schachter and inter did i mean barella hit a wonderful uh, shot at the crossbar uh but Schachter kept them contained and were uh dangerous themselves for most of the games and only in the end uh, Piatov had to make two big saves and I thought yeah this nil nil mm, I'm not too unhappy about that because you know that uh, does mean that Inter get off the track however you see an Inter jersey right up there yes because of other results Inter's chances of advancing improved that was not what was expected uh, the big game and uh, you know I think everything uh, on Tuesday and to, to be honest, this was the game to watch. PSG against Man City. I mean, this was the biggest uh, star lineup against the best squad in Europe. That's at least how I see it. And I think many will agree with me. Um, I was actually, like many, thinking that Man City will probably walk a bit all over PSG. However, uh, PSG got an early break. Uh, and it was none of the big stars. It was Idrissa Gay who slammed in uh, the ball and then Man City had chances controlled, no, not chance, controlled the game, had a lot of possession, uh, pushed PSG back and forth and yes, they had a chance where I think it was uh, Sterling uh, hitting the crossbar and then Bernardo Silva from uh, basically a meter, a meter and a half out the rebound, he kind of pulled it over, over the line again on the crossbar. Um, and that is the point where I thought, ooh, PSG might actually win this one. I would never count too much against um, Man City because I know they are a pretty formidable team. But uh, I've seen many games when you start missing such big chances, this is where you basically don't get it. And it's exactly how it panned out then in the second half. Um, it was Man City again controlling the game. However, PSG, with those three up front being very dangerous on the counter there was one where I think Neymar has to pass it over. Yes, there was a little bit of a bad story between him and Mbappé for a short while. Um, made it, uh, didn't did not make it. Neymar actually was kind of anonymous, but it seems that Mbappé Messi relationships get getting going because the way Messi first takes a run and then makes a one-two with Mbappé and then from outside of the... Uh, 16 yard box puts it into the top corner. <laughs> Typically messy. First goal from PSG, and yeah, it was a great goal. And uh, PSG get a pretty big win. And after only the draw against Bruges, 
Yeah, now uh, get off to uh, this, I think, was a pretty decisive win. Now you not, uh, just need to nav navigate the Leipzig game, and I think you're looking quite good. However, I will not go so far as to as to declare that this makes now PSG the top fa favorite for the champ Champions League, blah, 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 blah. We might not even, oh, this was the final before the final, no. They also might not even make it to the final uh, because the Champions League is such a crapshoot. Uh, at this stage, all that's important is make it to the next round, then make it into the quarterfinals and hope that you get a run of form that will carry you through to the final. This is how the Champions League works. It's all about surviving, maybe until you hit the quarterfinal, and then you got to build up momentum. So uh, that's why. I am not gonna go that. I spoke about Bruges. Bruges got a huge win, and this was putting a big smile on my face uh, by winning at Leipzig, coming from behind, and Nkunku scoring in the fifth minute, and getting two goals through Van Aken and Ritz. And to be honest, uh, they fully deserved that win, and they are the big winners of this round. They have improved the chances of advancing, which are not very big, but they're the biggest improvement in the chances uh, of advancing. Um, more than doubling it. Nah. Yeah, more. Almost doubling it. Uh, to move on with that win and uh, also putting a strong uh, survival to uh, a strong case for surviving into the, uh, the Europa League. Um, I was looking at a Club Bruce shirt not too long ago, so buying it, I said, nah, with that Champions League, I will not need it. I regret now that I don't have Club Bruce. We have to talk about the sour game for me, uh, Milan Atletico. I, I think I can do it rather quickly. Milan played brilliantly. The young squad had, especially in the first 30 minutes, the game completely in the bag and took a fully deserved lead through uh, Leao, who also uh, before that uh, probably, he probably should, should have been assisted already. Wonderful. Great performance, great team for Milan back. Everything looked looking perfect. However, the referee, uh, Junior Chakia, had a complete uh, brain fart for 100 minutes plus. Um, how he sent off Cassie for the second yellow card was already enraging me. I thought, yes, it's a foul. It's not a yellow card. Yes, I'm a Milan fan. Yes, I'm a little bit biased here, but I hear even from others. This was just so, and this completely changed the game in many ways. However, to their credit, Milan really dug deep. They brought in Tonali, which I was a little bit surprised that Tonali was, wasn't playing from the beginning, and did everything to keep Atletico Madrid away from their own goal and did so brilliantly, defending very well as, as a team and Atleti uh, threw everything on. I mean, uh, even the first half, Joao Felice came on, De Paul came on, uh, Lodi came on, Griezmann came on, Thomas Lemar came on. I mean, he threw everything at them. And they really held their own. However, then uh, a nice goal by Griezmann gives them the equal, and I said, yeah, meh. But what followed then in stoppage time, that penalty is an outrage. Yes, the ball is at the hand, but the first, he hits, I think, Lemar first. And second of, of all, there's such a short distance, he cannot react away. And then they look at the bar and cannot take it. Yeah, Suarez converts. Absolute sour grapes. I mean, I take the positive from it. It was a great performance by Milan. Milan can hold their own. Maybe this will be a season like Dortmund had the first time under Klopp, uh, when they were uh, kind of had to pay a little bit uh, for the inexperience. Maybe it will be a season like that. They hung with Liverpool. Yeah, Liverpool was better, but you know, they hung in there. They even had the lead. They hung very, very with Atleti. They should. I, th I personally think that Milan would have deserved the win, at least a draw. That that win was. And I mean, it said everything. Van Pioli said afterwards. Yeah, let, let's say that the ref was not the man of the match. And then uh, the Simeone afterwards said, "Well, if I was in Pioli's shoes, I would not have chosen such uh, diplomatic words." He even realized it. Of course, as an Inter man, he loved what's going on there. But yeah. <sighs> And then what in addition enraged me is that Liverpool, and not, it has nothing to do with the game, Liverpool completely rolled over Porto. And I'm happy, I want Liverpool to run away with the group. The rest should remain tight because Milan will have a chance to advance, at least. Salah, Mane, already in the first half. Um, and then again, Salah with one. Uh, Taremi pulls, pulls my back, but Firmino <laughs> just scores two goals. Uh, the, I think this 
was, was the second one uh, where the goalie is far, far out and tries to catch it and da, da, da. What really enraged me is the game is 3 0. And they have the goal show. There were five minutes on that game when it was already decided when there were all these other games PSG, Man City, Milan, Atletico, Leipzig. Um, we'll see later Dortmund with Saison, Real Madrid, there was still something to play for. This game was the least interesting of them all. Yes, when there's a goal, go there, but go there for the goal, out of it. This is what really enraged me because I thought this cannot be. I mean, there is Milan Atletico Comodri, which probably was the best game of this evening, and you barely see anything. Yes, I could have switched over, but you know, I want to see what's happening. Anyway, Liverpool pff, cruising, really, really doing well as, as, as well. They find them currently at the third uh, favorite spot. By the way, Man City 2, um, PSG 4 at this moment. Uh, Dortmund uh, Sporting was a weird game with hardly any chances uh, The Dortmund won. Most interestingly though is that Dortmund, uh, their Puma jersey has now a crest. <laughs> the fans did not like it. But you know, that would be an, a different video. Real Madrid against Sheriff, the, the shocker of the evening. Um, if you look at the stats, you will see this was more or less a freak result because they just, uh, Real Madrid just couldn't co co convert. But the fact that Sheriff, and um, I have to say, I heard it yesterday and I have had it repeated. It's a great story for the players involved because there are absolute no names. It's not necessarily a great story because of Sheriff itself. The, you know, the, the background answer is not so savory, but you know. Um, this wall here is a wall of clouds with full of unsavory char characters as well. So, uh, just to say, put 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 it out there. But it's not this uh, fairy story. Like if a Danish team like Horsens would beat the Real Madrid, I think this would be all if Club Bruges would have done. That I think would be a, a better story than if Sheriff does it. However, Sheriff first time in the Battle Bay of winning two one. Um, Real Madrid only being able to score from a penalty and the winning goal, an absolute screamer by uh, Teal, they already had a goal this this allowed for offside, so I mean it was not so uh, surprising overall, so Real Madrid I think over 30 shots on goal or whatever. Teal from Luxembourg, that's pretty pretty special I have, I have, I have to say, and yeah, as I said it's not maybe a fairy tale, but it's still I had a smile, smile on my face. Because Real Madrid has this in them, and then they will play against Inter, will win easily. But you know, that group, uh, they still have to nav navigate. You will see the chances in the stats cast. Um, Atalanta against Young Boys. Atalanta took a whole, whole lot of time until they finally broke down Young, young Boys. They thought they had a goal, it was taking off for offside. Then finally, Pessina gets it after Zapata assist, where uh, Pessina just gets the foot before the defender and then nicely in. Um, it was the first game for Atalanta in their home the first Champions League in their home stadium, so that was also pretty special. Uh, and young boys, I think, will not be too unhappy to have lost only one nil, so maybe a draw was in there. Zenit over Malmö, very easy 4 0 win. As Bayern over Dinamo Kiev, I said Bayern are now the top favorites. Lewandowski getting first two goals. Uh, most notable, the goal, fourth goal by Sané. I think he wanted to cross. And then it lands in goal. It was a free goal. Benfica, uh, the top team here because I don't have Club Bruges and Sheriff who are the top two. 3 0 over Barcelona. Um, I don't want to say necessarily fully deserved uh, in that scoreline, but Barcelona uh, missed quite a few chances. De Jong. Um, but I was thinking, you know, uh, now with Kuman, there's a Dutchification of Barcelona again. And if there are too many Dutch players there, yes, Barcelona is a very much a Dutch identity, identity after Cruyff. However, um, I personally think this is always where it gets a little bit too much. You need to go more with the local Catalan talent and maybe get a Dutch superstar in there, like Frankie de Jong, not Luc de Jong, who is missing left and right. And if he plays once to Depay, they can get an equalizer. I think if uh, Barca scores an equalizer there, the game ends differently. However, um, yeah. Kuman seems to be a uh, dead man walking. Now we talk about Messi scoring, of course the other one needs to score too. However, that was not an easy game for United at all, who were not prepared for Villarreal, seemingly. Villarreal had chances, especially in the first 60 minutes, they should have been up by two if not three goals. Then United dug in. Then they got something going, they got a wonderful equalizer by Teyes. After Bruno Fernandes free kick outside, uh, just outside of the box, 
Uh, that was a great goal, but I think a draw would have been deserved at that point. Yes, uh, it was going back, back and forth. The winner came, and I honestly say, if Cavani is not such a battling striker, that goal doesn't arrive. He gets the ball. He then enables it that it uh, can't get crossed. Um, where Jesse Lingard plays it to Ronaldo, who from a very acute angle puts it in. Uh, I have heard that there might be some thoughts about offside and why this wasn't checked because there was some obstruction. I honestly didn't see it, but yeah, uh, Ronaldo scored and we saw a lot of naked upper bodies Ronaldo in the stadium and you know at PSG the front line also posts um, half naked, you know, the shorts very, very, very low that we all see their wonderful abs. I should do that, but I think then I will lose quite a few viewers around here. Salzburg against Lille. You might think I'm from Austria. I would be happy. No, I actually want Lille to win this one. You know, I don't like Salzburg and I know it's good for Austria. So, I mean, maybe I was neutral in, 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 in a way. Salzburg deserved that win though. Uh, they were the better team. They get again two penalties. They have now five penalties in two games and only converted three of them. Two yesterday to make it 2-1. Um, I have to, have, to have to say the first penalty. Uh, once you see the replay that um, the way Botman goes in first, hits Ad Adem before he plays the ball. I think from that moment on it was a foul that the referee from Turkey lets in all the discussions. I think I would have sent, uh, given a few yellow cards, uh, especially Burak Gilmas, and uh, that would have taken a lot of the heat out of it. Uh, I found the referee rather weak there. It was not a good week, uh, uh, midweek for referees, let's put it that way. Second penalty was Wolf, was clear one, then uh, Bura Gilmas scores the goal because the goalie can. Uh, Salzburg has always a goalkeeper problem, um, but they hang on and get a 2-1 win, which actually puts them now in pole position in this group. Uh, and I had a feeling that Salzburg could do well in this group. Uh, Wolfsburg against Sevilla was not a good game. A lot of midfield uh, back and forth. Renato Steffen gives them the lead and it really, really think, uh, seems like uh, they will go on to win it because there was nothing coming from Sevilla. Spanish teams really not having a good week. I think Sevilla was the only one who picked up points. All the others lost and there are five Spanish teams in there. Let me go, yeah, ah, Atletico. <laughs> yeah, I would have loved if Atletico would have lost. They would have deserved to lose. Um, the penalty that gives Sevilla then the equalizer. That's ridiculous. This comes from VAR. Uh, Gilla uh, Vugi wants to yank the ball away. And for some reason, he hits the sole of, I think it was Rakitic. The referee didn't think, no one is complaining. And then VAR says, yeah, there's a penalty and the player's getting sent off. An absolute, absolute, this was even worse than the Milan penalty. Rakitic, yes, Sevilla also, two goals from two penalties. It's a penalty group there, uh, but it's not a good group. I mean, South, Salzburg is exciting. And then the defending champions, Chelsea, managed to lose at Juve. Uh, Allegri doing Allegri things, uh, keeping it tight at the back. And then just after the half, Chiesa strikes. Chelsea controlling possession, controlling every uh, the game left and right. Although Juve then at the end of the first half got a little bit dangerous in the end, probably would have deserved a win because there was not too much showing from Chelsea. And I think Chelsea will be very happy that there's now an international break coming where they can kind of a little bit regroup. I think they have going. We already saw it. I mean, uh, everyone was always, uh, Ch Chelsea is doing so well, I always felt that Chelsea is you know, still in the finding phase a little bit. It's not very well adjusted. Yes, the way they then destroyed Tottenham was really uh, impressive, but it was Tottenham. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's it from me from the Champions League. Uh, let me know what you thought about the games. I feel a little bit more negative than positive about the whole thing, although, as I said, there are many positive things that I actually liked during that one. But again, if Milan loses and, you know, some other th uh, results no, no, not going there and say my way or whatever, yeah, we'll see. Any case, I want to hear your opinion of what was happening. Uh, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.